In this video, I wanted to go over our valuation and share price. We've got a lot of questions on that. How did we end up at $40 a share? Where did our valuation came from? And what did we use to determine that valuation? Well, to start with, our share price is $40 a share, $55 Canadian, 40 US. So why is it that so high when you're seeing other companies having a $5 or $15 price per share? Well, when it comes to it, those other companies have a lot more shares. A publicly traded company can have hundreds of millions of shares. Therefore, you take the valuation or the market cap of that company divided by the number of shares and that gives you your share price. So for Edison, we have a $200 million US valuation. That gives us by 5 million shares, $40 per share. Now, how do we have a $200 million valuation? How did we get there? What metrics did we use? How did we evaluate it? Well, it's not an exact science to evaluate a pre-revenue company because you gotta, there's nothing to go on when you're pre-revenue, you're not selling a product. So you have to look at, well, what's the potential that they could be in the future? What's the risk? What are they at? And one of the best ways to do it is look at other similar companies. What are those similar companies at for their valuation at similar stages of growth to what we're at. So we're in the, basically we built a couple prototypes, we've done some testing, now we've sold some trucks to customers and we're now building the first production trucks. So if we have a look at where other truck manufacturers in the startup space were when they were starting, where were those EV companies at, at that stage similar to us, look at their valuations, compare all the different valuations to similar companies, and then we got to have a look. How do they get to their valuation? Was their valuation justified? And what should our valuation be based on what we learned? So in this video, we're going to have a look at some of the other competitors, some of the other EV truck startups, and we're going to compare their similar stage of growth to where we're at now. And we're going to tell you why we're at where we're at. All right, start with, uh, we're going to pick the elephant in the room, Nikola Motors. Uh, yes, that company has had a lot of issues, but it's a good way to compare the value of a startup semi-truck EV manufacturer and what their value was because it's well documented from when they had their multiple first prototypes uh, to where they were in valuation where they are now. So let's just have a look at where they were and what their valuation was at that time. So in 2018, Nikola showed a video of their truck rolling down a hill. They had released it a few years back before as and showed it off but it wasn't until 2018 that they actually showed it driving and announced that they were getting ready to build for customers this is a similar stage that i think we're at um except our truck actually works um that's another thing we'll get into in a second but more importantly what was their valuation at this point i found this article they were able to raise funding at a 1.1 billion dollar valuation in 2018 so 2018 uh, they showed the video going down. The company was worth $1.1 billion at a similar stage in growth. So I would say that we are at a similar stage to what investors thought Nikola was at for having a truck that rolled. We've actually shown it. We've hauled loads. We've wasn't an empty drive van. We've seen the loads on the back of the truck that we've hauled. We've showed that it works. But if Nikola was $1.1 billion, I don't think $200 million. We're $900 million less than that company at a similar stage. And it gets crazier when you look into it. So now we can get into the data that we can actually track here. And in 2020, it came out that Nikola admits the truck was just rolling down a hill. So in 2020, it came out that this truck didn't even work. So what was the valuation of this company once they had already people found out that there was fraud involved? We can go and have a look at the valuation here. So in 2020, Nikola Motors was worth $10 billion off a truck that didn't even work. When did they actually reveal their first hydrogen prototypes that they had promised? September 29th, 2023 is when they unveiled their first prototypes, their first launch of the hydrogen prototypes. We can actually scroll through here. September 29th, 2023, we have a $2.1 billion valuation at the unveiling of their semi-truck prototypes. Despite them 
showing off one truck and getting 1.1 billion and still keeping a $10 billion valuation. When they released their next prototypes for the truck that they faked, they were at a $2.1 billion valuation still. The CEO of Nikola Motors was found guilty of fraud on October 14th, 2022. And even at the day where they were found guilty of fraud, they were 1.8 billion. Now, these valuations are clearly over the top. Unrealistic that a company convicted of fraud that just has prototypes was between one to 20 billion and at their peak was worth 30 to $40 billion on the promise of delivering these hybrid or electric hydrogen trucks. Now, I think that's a nuts valuation. We are not touching that, but that is a comparable one. If you were to look at the extremes of where Edison could go to. Next, I wanna have a look at Lion Electric or Leon. They are another Canadian truck manufacturer that was more focused on school buses, smaller electric vehicles, that class five, class six, eight market able to look into some of the valuation they had, where were they at? Now, we've seen this news article from 2020 where they're looking to start delivering their first trucks to their first customers. That was in September of 2020. And we can find the financial information on that as back in 2020, they were around 700 million to about a billion dollars in valuation on the news that they were going to be starting to deliver trucks. Now we're at a similar point where we're building our trucks that we're hoping to deliver to our first customers very soon. So I think this is a fair one to say. And where these guys are at 700 million to 1 billion, we're not there. They also had a bit of the school buses that they were building a little bit of and some issues like that as well. They were promising to the market that they're going to be able to make 2,500 trucks per year. This is one of those things where I say that we're not making those promises. So in light of the fact that we're not making the promises, I think we're at a comparable point where they had the smaller delivery trucks and the school buses. We've got the semi trucks and the pickup truck uh, retrofit kit. So we do have two different product lines, but we're not promising 2,500. So instead of that 700 million to $1 billion valuation, we're around that 200 million. So we're five times less than Leon at a comparable stage. If you take this to the high side of Leon, um, where they're really saying that they're getting, getting it into production and build thousands of trucks, they hit a maximum market cap of 4.5 billion. Unfortunately, Leon does stand as a little bit of a, a testament to why you shouldn't overpromise. Just try and raise a bunch of money and say you're gonna build thousands and thousands of trucks. Ultimately, in my opinion, they may have rushed a little bit too soon. They're now bankrupt. They couldn't deliver on their promises. They couldn't build trucks for a profit, and it went down. Here's an interesting one, Exos. It's a company probably not a lot of you have heard of, but essentially back in 2020, these guys were able to raise $20 million to increase production. That's where we're at. That's what this raise is going on for. Right now, we have built a couple prototypes, we've tested it, we've shown it off to customers, we've got sales, now we're trying to increase production. So where was Exos back in 2020? So let's have a look at Exos's shares. Uh, if we have a look back to 2020, that's where you can first see that the information is available. They were worth $300 per share. Right now, they are worth $3 per share. Their market cap currently is 25, so Roughly times by 100 gives you 2,500 million or $2.5 billion. So when they had built a truck and they were looking to upscale production, they were worth $2.5 billion, over 10 times the value of Edison Motors at this point. We can have a look at another startup, Atlas, who was going to build a pickup truck, which is crazy nightmares for regulation. But let's have a look at them. Uh, three years ago, back in 2021, they revealed their first prototype, which is the truck you see here. And I was able to find an article where they are talking about 2021 and raising that, scaling it. If you have a look, the company's website was valued at $950 million. That was their valuation after revealing their first prototype. Um, Edison Motors is currently on our second prototype, That things we've learned from the first one. I'm not sure if Atlas had a second one yet or not. 
but we are now going into production and that's something that they had not done yet. So 950 million, we are still five times less of a valuation than Atlas. Okay, the next company I would like to introduce is Aptera. I believe that they're right now at a similar stage. They built a couple prototypes, they work, they're showing them off, they've driven around a bit, and now they're taking some pre-orders and they're looking to go to production. Exactly where Edison Motors at. Uh, this is their vehicle here. It's a little three-wheeled motorcycle. It's pretty cool. I actually really like it. I think they've got a cool idea. It's powered off solar panels on the roof, so it's basically like range extended, but instead of a diesel generator, it's solar panels to give you a little bit extra range. Really cool idea, cool company. Uh, let's have a look at their investment. What are they raising money on? Because right now they're doing the same thing we're doing. They have an investment option on their website that you can go to. You can click on and invest now where all of their information is available on an offering circulaire. Click on that and we can scroll down on that and we will see that they have about 70 million shares outstanding. 55 of class A, 15 of class B. Now, I want to make this clear. At Edison Motors, we only have one class. There's no preferred class, class A or class B. Everyone that owns a share has the same class, has the same voting rights, and has the same say in the company as anyone else that owns a share. Now, their share price is currently $15, $14.80. If you times that by the 70 million shares outstanding, you get about $1 billion in valuation or about 5X Edison Motors. This is another good point I wanted to bring up. People ask us about share price. They notice that our shares at $40 US or $55 Canadian is a lot higher than a lot of these other companies like Aptera. That's because we don't have a lot of shares outstanding. Edison Motors only has 5 million shares, not 70 million. So if you were to take that 200 million divided by the 5 million, you get $40 per share. We have a higher share price because we don't have a lot of shares. So each share is worth a little bit more. All in all, I really like Aptera. I think they've got a really cool, unique product. Uh, I'm impressed with what they're doing. But yeah, they're at about a $1 billion valuation, five times what we're currently asking for Edison Motors. All right, the next company I think we need to look at because they're very, very similar to Edison Motors in what we're doing. They were also doing a hybrid drivetrain and that's Hylian. Hylian went with natural gas, we went with diesel, but Hylian unveiled their prototype here. It looks like in uh, July 14th of 2020. So if we scroll back at their market cap to compare their valuation, back then they were around $3.8 billion and they went up as high as 4.1 billion. So they announced their thing. They hadn't started production, but they had showed off a prototype and they were getting ready to scale up. Hylian got out in November of 2020. They completely stopped making trucks. That's why they offered us the parts. If we have a look, they were worth $150 million to $200 million valuation when they announced that they weren't making trucks anymore, that they couldn't continue to operate. And currently right now, they're still worth $680 million. So when the company was at the same stage we were at, they were worth about $4 billion. When they said that they weren't even gonna make any trucks anymore and laying off all their staff, they went down to 150 million when they had to restructure. So we're 200 million, we're only 50 million more than the truck manufacturer who announced that they're not making trucks anymore. Luckily for Highland, good on them, they were able to recover, they were able to restructure their business a little bit and start getting back, but this kind of shows you where we're at for valuation on similar companies like that for when they're at the same stage as us and when they're bankrupt or near to it. So now we had a look at the startups. Now, why are those startups being valued so high? Especially in the truck manufacturing sector, they're going to look at existing players in the industry and see where established players are valued. So if a startup can get established and enter the market, where would their value end up being? So let's have a look at Kenworth and Peterbilt, otherwise known as Packar. Packar has a market cap of $54 billion. Comparing it to General Motors is $59 billion. Packar, Kenworth and Peterbilt are similar in value to General Motors. Ford only has a market cap of $40 billion. In other words, Kenworth and Peterbilt are worth about $15 billion more than Ford Motor. Now, 
why are they worth a fair bit? Kenworth and Peterbilt don't make as many vehicles. It's because the cost of a semi-truck is obviously a lot higher. And the other thing with that is that their net profit margin, the net profit margin of Packard was 13.5%. Ford's profit margin to have a look at was 2.55%. So the big truck OEMs are making a 13.5% margin where the automobile manufacturers are working in that 2-3% margin. So you can see why the valuation of these semi-trucks is so much higher because they're a more profitable manufacturing business. And I think that especially if we're focused on the vocational side where the heavy vocational has an even larger margin than the mass produced class eight highway trucks, I think we're very, very well positioned on that going forward. Once we do become successful, hopefully we do. All right, so we had a look at our competitors and we're seeing between $1 billion to $4 billion in valuation. So now with Edison Motors being 200 million valuation, why are we five times less than even the lowest amount? It's because we think they were over promising. We don't think that they were entitled to the valuations they did because I think they made promises that they couldn't realistically make. We're not doing that. We're also setting a longer time frame. They were promising that they were gonna get to production really soon. We're saying that it's going to take a while and we're going to go the slower route and the more controlled route. Obviously, it gets discounted back to net present value. If they're saying that they're going to be here within a year and we're saying five years, that needs to be discounted back. But I think our slow approach is the right way. I think these other companies were overvalued. I think we're giving a realistic value based on what we could potentially achieve discounted back to what's realistic and accounting for the risk we face in getting there. Is Edison Motors a risky play? Absolutely. As we've seen, a lot of these other companies didn't make it, but we're thinking that lower valuation than all of the other competitors at similar stages should help account for that risk as we find out that going forward. I think we have a lower share price, we have a lower valuation, because we have a more realistic tempered expectations that we're giving. And I'm thinking a lot of people seem to be agreeing with us. We're raising money. The investment campaign is going successfully. So I'm hoping we're right on the money with that one. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Obviously, uh, evaluating a pre-revenue business isn't an exact science. All we can do is go based on what other people have achieved at similar stages of growth in the market and adjust accordingly based on what we believe. And I hope that makes sense. All right, guys, I want to just take a couple seconds. We're not doing an ad. I just want to thank everyone that's invested with Edison Motors. You guys know we don't have venture capital. We don't have that kind of money. We told them no. We are invested and owned by the fans like you who are watching this video. You guys supported us all the way when it was just an idea through building Carl to building Topsy. And now as we go back into our next production run, taking this next step. So all of you that supported us, invested with us, thank you so, so much. We appreciate it more than you know.